fact, I am at lost in the sense that I was asked to speak on a worth of an individual. One has to know his worth, and at the same time, the worth of others. But before that, some 56 years ago, I was born in this city of Maiduguri, the capital city of Borno State. During the formative years of our lives, Borno has been the most peaceful, the most hospitable and accommodating society. Communities were well needed, sense of belonging everywhere, visitors were accepted, not as visitors, but as equal in citizenship in Borno. We have provided for so many. We have chosen to take this part of the world as their second home. When Shehu Abu Bakr Garbay ibn Ibrahim al Kanemi decided to move his capital away from the devastated Kukawa to Herwa, meaning a city of prosperity, and that is my degree, many things were put in place to ensure that a lasting peace, tranquility, and a sense of absolute belonging is established, and that was what they did. Communities were well knitted both in cultural, religious, and societal aspects. Individualistic tendencies of today were absent at that time. The little that you have, you always want to share with your neighbor, with your guests, and with passers-by. This opened a room because of the nature inherent in us, the people of Bonu, of accepting communities outside our community, People started coming in. Yes, we open up because of the generosity that is in us. But unfortunately, people took the advantage of our receptiveness, took the advantage of our simplicity, and started to erode all the social values that we have. Parents these days taught us to be good citizens. They taught us to assist the less privileged. They instill in us the feelings of cultural revivalism at that time. But unfortunately, with the passing years and of the clashes, of values happening within the society, ideology started changing. The once protected ones have now given way to new ideas. Then a crisis of identity started to come up. I and my peer group those that have enjoyed the quality of training, the quality of good upbringing, those that have lived in a morally secured environment, were not won over, but the most weakest among us, 
the most vulnerable among us, that is the youth generation, were taken over ideologically, destroyed in thoughts, and introduced into new ways which landed us in trouble. In the late 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, here in Borno, as an outshoot of what happened in Kano in the 80s, Maitasini came up with a dangerous ideology which resulted into a crisis that has taken lots of lives and destroyed a lot of communities and livelihoods. But in our own year, the year of the generation, where most of us have forgotten about who we are and we are copying and becoming copycats, Muhammad Yusuf came with a very dangerous ideology that is the Boko Haram insurgency. We are all aware that the insurgency started as a rival to the peaceful coexistence that we have enjoyed for the first years of our existence in Borno. Muhammad Yusuf introduced his ideology and the greater majority of his followership are the young ones. But are they really young ones from Borno? Or the young ones that were being transported daily on trucks and dropped at the gateway into Borno? The Almajiris that were neglected by their parents from other parts of this country in the name of Quranic education? Or are the Chibleva? The small girls, the small boys that were transported into Maiduguri. So it was a very Herculean task for the authorities to handle because the traditional authority of which I am one have tried our best in informing the authorities and government of the tide of terrorism and sufferings that are ahead of our communities. But unfortunately, it was embalmed with a very soothing oil, and later it degenerated into a full blown war. Ten years till now, we were unable to complete that crisis and put an end to the insurgency, though authorities and government were trying. Resilience, as part of our culture, has worked very well. Communities that were hitherto knitted together were broken, as I said. We have lost both in human and capital resources, sources of livelihoods have been wasted, communities were turned into displaced persons, yet our resolve hasn't been broken till date. This is one of the greatest qualities of what we are in Borno. My idea of a community, morally, socially, religiously knitted, is that to have a generation that are upcoming, who value the past generation, adding value also to their present circumstance, and then thinking ahead to build a purposeful, egalitarian, peaceful society of their own. This will not be achieved except when we imbibe the culture of being resilient at the face of challenges. We have been resilient. 
when we face challenges before now. We have accepted fate as one of our motivators in life. And that is what has brought Borno to this position, and that is what will continue to give us that name, an acronym which we earned in yesteryears, the home of peace and hospitality. Lastly, one of the greatest caliphs of his time, the son-in-law of the greatest prophet of Islam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, in his famous treatise, Nahjul Balaga, had said a very, very important message. And I quote, a society whose younger generation is lost in a passion for worldly things and engrossed in the lust for wealth and pride, bereft of humanity, such a society is a degenerate one. Now, it is our responsibility as upcoming generation to always take pride in what we can do to secure our morality, our society, and our honesty in building an egalitarian, peaceful, and prosperous society. Thank you.